अकबर की कहानी जब कोई भी सुनाएगा दिल वालों की आंखों से एक दरिया बहाएगा मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलवाल ढल गया सूरज शम्मा जली नन्ना मेरा अस है कहा गया रे ढल गया सूरज शम्मा जली नन्ना मेरा अस है कहा गया रे रात अंधेरी सुनसान बन ढूंढू कहा तुझे ए गुल बदन रात अंधेरी सुनसान बन ढूंढू कहा तुझे ए गुल बदन रो रो पुकारी मादल जली नन्ना मेरा अस है कहा गया रे वक्त मदद है मुश्किल कुशा मुश्किल करो हर बहरे खुदा वक्त मदद है मुश्किल कुशा मुश्किल करो हर बहरे खुदा तुम ही बताओ मौला अली नन्ना मेरा अस है कहा गया रे जंगल में किस जा तू खो गया झूला है खाली ए महल का जंगल में किस जहां तू खो गया झूला है खाली ए महल का किस को झूलाए अम्मा तेरी नन्ना मेरा अस है कहा गया रे ये तो बता दे ए हुरमला छेदा है क्यों तूने नन्ना गला डूबी है खू में नन्नी कली नन्ना मेरा अस है कहा गया रे तेरी जमी पर 
है कर बला गुम हो गया है बचा मेरा तेरी जमी पर है कर बला गुम हो गया है बचा मेरा ढूंढ रही हूँ गली गली नन्ना मेरा अस है कहा गया रे डल गया सूरज शम्मा जली नन्ना मेरा अस है कहा गया रे Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Malim Nungarsi Sheikh Finay my elders brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum a no, number of um, things going on this weekend um, so I'll just try and be quick um, in regards to niyaz um, those who have um, pledged um, sponsorships your pledge requested to fulfill your pledges so this way we can uh, keep filling up the the days as we go along. We're also requesting a family contribution of $150 per family. Of course, whatever you contribute uh, would be appreciated. This is um, the Niaz Fund and the family contribution are the two means by which we run the programs for the month of Muharram and Safar. So we do please request you to help us with that. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, we'll be having uh, Brother Shahid Baltistani joining us here at the evening program for the Nauhas. Uh, tomorrow evening, beginning at 6 p.m., going on to about 11, we'll be having our blood drive here. Uh, please make sure you bring your uh, photo ID and social security number, and you can check the email for more information. Tomorrow, um, there's a program with the Huiz Hussein group. Uh, Huiz Hussein is holding a workshop on how to engage in conversation with people about Imam Hussein and have a discussion on countering Islamophobia. This will be held at uh, Masjid Ali in New Jersey from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. tomorrow. The attendees will also be able to make the English flags, the alums, to be held during the procession, which will be held on Sunday. Bio, let's respect, please. Um, the thing is, some of these announcements are for the weekend program, so please make sure you are aware of them. Um, there's also some changes to programs, and it's tough to uh, follow. So in regards to the program tomorrow, for, for more information, please contact the members from Hois Hussein. And you can also check them from the Facebook page, and uh, all donations are also tax deductible. They appreciate your contributions. This is for the workshop on engaging people in a conversation about Imam Hussein. I would mentioned a few days ago about a survey by World Federation. World Federation had sent a representative here a couple of weeks ago to discuss with the community about um, various, uh, uh, how the community sees various aspects of uh, their interaction with World Federation, with the Jamaat, with Nasimko. They have received a very poor response on the survey. Um, I think New York Jamaat is one of the ones that has the least amount of responses. So many times we hear the complaint from our community members saying that, you know, it's poor communication amongst ourselves. There's poor communication with the Jamaat, poor communication with Nasimko, poor communication with World Federation. Well, this is your opportunity. Um, they are giving you the opportunity to give your feedback. They have a very simple survey with a lot of simple questions to give your response. Tomorrow, don't say that they're not reaching out to you because they have reached out to you. They're asking you for your opinion. They really appreciate your feedback. That will help them um, plan for the future uh, programs. The calendars are now available. These are for $10. Um, whatever extra proceeds are met, 
will go towards the new project. On Ashura Day, there'll be a bus that has been arranged for transportation uh, for the Majlis at uh, Rosal Cemetery. This has been kindly sponsored by the Diani family. We thank them for their contribution. Tonight's uh, Quran Khani was decided for Marhum Heather by Darcy, who passed away and was buried uh, today. Uh, Marhum was the father of our very own brother, Shani Darcy, uh, from New York, who has served the community for very, very many, many years. Um, we pray for the Marhum. But the Shani also has worked for many years on the Kafan Dafan Committee, and um, we really appreciate his services. We know it's a tough time for him and the family. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bless and forgive the Marhum and to give the family Sabra Jamil. Uh, Surya uh, Asin was also recited for the Salih Thawab of Marum Heather by Darcy, sponsored by Makbul by Ladakh. Al Fatiha. Lastly, I would like to invite uh, Brother Mutazi Jamal to come and share with us a project update on where we stand. While they're doing that, if I can request those to please uh, move forward so it's harder for the people to come later to come in without disturbing us. Awesome. Our guest speaker, Sheikh Vinay Ketia, our resident Zaki, Dr. Raza Dungarsi, scholars, sisters, and brothers in Iman, assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> I would like to give you a brief update on where we stand with the purchase of the proposed center in Hicksville, New York. As of today, we have approximately $2,220,000 in the bank. Approximately $1.2 million is on the way, and we expect these funds by October 15th. This would bring our total to $3,440,000. Given that we need $4 million by October 31st, our shortfall now stands at approximately $580,000. Brothers Murtaza Nathani, Sajad Ladda, and myself have been traveling extensively over the last couple of weeks in hopes of collecting funds. In fact, we're flying to Toronto tomorrow to present at the Jeffrey Center during the evening program. Alhamdulillah, the response has been good and we are very hopeful funds will come in. However, we only have 25 days till our plan closing on October 31st, and the total funds need to be collected before then. Please take note that we have a hard date in sight, and if we do not close on time, we risk losing the property and forfeiting the 200,000 deposit that was made when we signed our contract. Depending on closing logistics, we may have an additional week or two to extend the closing date, but we have no option thereafter to extend that deadline further. In order to assist with the shortfall, we're organizing a fundraiser that is scheduled for Sunday, October 8th, right before Mudlis. Our target is to raise $25,000 on the ladies' side and an additional $25,000 on the gents' side. If we have just 50 women, each contribute $500, and 50 men each contribute $500, we would achieve our target of $50,000 for that evening. And in addition, if we do raise $50,000 on Sunday, we have a donor who's gonna match that contribution, which will bring our total to 100,000 for that night. We are fortunate to have a large number of attendees tonight and hopefully over the next few evenings, and many have not had an opportunity to donate for our new multi-purpose center. And so we encourage you to please come on board and join us in this historic journey as we move to Long Island. Just envision attending a Muharram event next year in, at the new facility where we, will have, where we will be able to expand our program to possibly host a larger community and maybe even have an interfaith dialogue, sharing the historical significance of the events of Karbala with an audience that has never had a chance to hear Imam Hussein's message. Please support this important project as generously as possible. And with that, I say thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salwat.
Thank you. رحم الله من قرأ سورة المبارك الفاتحة. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين وخيرة خلق الله أجمعين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد والصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المهديين الميامين المقتولين ولعنة الله دائما على عادائهم أجمعين من يومنا هذا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم الكتاب المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا أدلنهم ولا أمنينهم ولا آمرنهم ولا ولا يبتكن آذان الأنعام ولا آمرنهم فلا يغيرن خلق الله ومن يتخذ شيطان وليا من دون الله فقد خسر خسرانا مبينا أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم So we are continuing with our topic inshallah بحولله قوتي with the road to Allah and through Imam al-Hussain alayhi salam Tonight we will shift gears to the concept of evil demons Satan and jinn and the role of Imam al-Hussain in providing us certain supplications and insight into this very precarious dimension, which is the role of demons or shayateen, the role of jinn and the role of human beings and the things that they can do, the things that happen, and the dangers that lurk. It's a little scary. So tonight and tomorrow, inshallah, we will deal with that and we will focus on modern manifestations of the junood and the army of shaitan. The modern workings, the modern and contemporary operational mechanisms of Hizb shaitan of the party of shaitan. And it is shocking surprising for some and scary it's sobering but the aimma peace and blessings be upon them especially imam hussein has given us a very deep insight into this world a very profound insight but we need to begin with the quran before we get to the kalam of imam hussein In the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan is addressing God. These are some of the most shocking lines that I've ever read in the, from, the, from the Holy Quran. Shocking. Shaitan addresses God and he says, That I swear I will misguide them. We'll go through this. And I will incite within them vain desires. <coughs> and 
tikunna adhan al an'am and I will order them to cut the ears of cattle. This is something very creepy here. To slice the ears in half of animals. Walamurannahum and I will order them. This is those who are in my army, in my junud. That they shall deface. I will order them to deface, pollute, and change the creation of God. And the one who takes shaitan as his master, as his guide, as his colonel, as his general, as his leader, Instead of God, فَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانًا مُبِينًا That they shall know that they have lost out completely. Because the, his, the party of Satan will never be successful. But they are under the false impression that by joining the army of Satan, and that army of Satan exists today, it's a reality. There are people that belong to this junood today. The junood of, of shaitan and they're among the troops of shaitan. This exists. This is, a, this is a divine reality. We will talk about this more tomorrow. There are jinn and there are human beings that are in this. But we need to understand the words of this ayat of the Quran. So first, shaitan says that I swear I will mislead them. I will It is very interesting here that every word here, let me just double check it. Yeah, this is profound. Begins with a double emphasis. It's very rare in the Quran that we see so many words in a row that have double emphasis, the lam and the nun. Both of them are not a part of the word. La udal. All of these are emphasis, meaning I swear, but I double swear on it. That I don't only swear, but I'm saying this is my only purpose, that I will not rest, I will not stop, I will not take a break, I will not sleep until I misguide them. وَلَا أُمْنِيَنَّهُمْ Until I incite vain desires within them. But see, this is a problem with English translation. أُمْنِيَنَّهُمْ comes from the word amana. Means safety. Meaning I will try to instill in their heart the idea that they will live forever. forever. تُولِ amar. That I will try to instill within their hearts this idea that there is no God, that there is no judgment, that there is no khair, and that there is no beginning mabda'a wa ma'ad and end. I will try to instill within that there is no lillahi wa ilayhi raji'un. That this is false, that this is all a scam, that this does not exist. The only thing that exists is here and now. This is what the Mufassirun, Alama Tabarasi, Sheikh Tusi, Ayatollah Nas al Makarim, they explain to us in the books of Tafasir. I will give them a false sense of security in their life. For them to think, this is so deep, this is so powerful. I mean, it shocked me. I was like shaking. My hands were, were, were rattling when I read this. That I will give them the sense that if I sin, God will forgive me, so I may go to hell for a little bit and eventually I'll go to heaven. That this idea, this thought that when I commit a sin knowingly, that's I feel think that, you know what, God will put me in hell, but I'll end up in heaven anyways eventually. That this false sense of security is from shaitan. And it is his determination and will to try to place that in our heart. 
And if we fight against that, then he'll try to tell us that we'll never be forgiven. So he comes at us from both sides. On one hand, he tries to tell us, go do it. Go commit fornication. Go look at something indecent. It's only once. God will forgive you. And if you go to hell a little bit, one foot in hell, it'll just a little burning. You only saw it once, then you go to heaven. He'll put that into our heart. But if we push back and we do toba, then he'll try to come to us and say, you know what? You've done too much. God won't forgive you. So then he'll try to put despair into our heart. It's very tricky. He will try to consume us with everything other than God, as, as Alama Taba Taba explains in Al-Bizan. Yani ishtighal an Allah. That he'll try to, to, to make us so busy that we forget God. And as we forget God, we will take the road of haram. Whether it be in our wealth, with our eyes, with our ears, with our tongue, or with the evil suspicions that we have about one another. Then it gets even more creepy and more scary. Because it doesn't end there. Shaitan continues, right? And then he says, I'm going to command them to cut the, the ears of cattle. Adhan al-an'am. This is something very creepy and mysterious here. Uh, and we have to go to the books of Tafasir to understand what is going on here. What we understand is that in pre-Islamic times, the Arabs used to mutilate certain animals while they are living. They used to cut their ears in half. Certain kinds of cattle, certain kinds of animals. It's, it's not a practice that, no, that exists today anymore. But we could think a little deeper about this and how it applies to the use of a knife, to the use of cutting, and to the use of violence for entertainment and, um, I guess, a rush. Or violence out of superstition. Or the mistreatment of animals, right? There are people in this world that abuse animals. Right, that kill animals, right? And we know that sociopaths, the killers, murderers, right? They usually begin by killing their cat and their dog and you know, strangling their, their, uh, their bird and things like this. We understand these things. And then slowly they become killers and murderers and, you know, and so on and so forth, right? They become these, these narcissistic sociopaths, right? Um, much like ISIS, very similar. Right? People that get off on violence. Now, shaitan is saying that I will push them down this road further and further into the depths of this darkness. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. This is from the Holy Quran directly. فَلَا أَمُرَنَّهُمْ لِيُغَيِّرُوا and I shall order them to pollute and deface and change Allah's creation. Now, shaitan is a jinn, Iblis, formerly known as Iblis, made of fire. However, the sum of his army is made up of all kinds of people both from his own kind, which are jinn, and from human beings. Now those who sign up don't even know that they've signed up. It's not like shaitan comes on Friday night and says, okay, here's a sign-up sheet, whoever wants to come this week, put your names down and we'll figure it out, you know, and then I'll go through the list. No, it's very subtle as to how people can join the army of shaitan, and we're going to talk about how Na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah, we could join the army of shaitan. It's possible. It's very mumkin. Like I said, it's very subtle. It's not like shaitan comes and he's got this list and he says, okay, Friday night, everyone meet me, you know, at 
Fifth Avenue and something, and I'm going to have a list and you sign up and so on and so forth. No, 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 no. Although there are people like that in this world. I mean, those are the people who are, re who are we could say, are like in his top um, lieutenants. They exist in this world. They exist. These are real people. We'll talk about them tomorrow. These are real individuals that exist. But for the average person, they will join the Hizb of Shaitan, the army of Shaitan, and we're going to get to the Holy Quran, because Quran talks very clearly about this, in a way that they may not entirely realize that they've now joined a new Jamaat, and that's the Jamaat of Shaitan, at least. Entirely, not Jamaat of Shia Nashi, Jamaat of New York, but the Jamaat of Iblis himself. Um, and Imam Hussein again, and then the jinn and the humans, once they join this army, they start out as passive participants in the army of shaitan. It's very passive, right? It starts out you only hurting yourself, you're doing your own sin. And eventually what happens is they begin to hurt other people. Both the jinn and the human beings. And this is what Imam Hussein refers to in Dua Arafah where he says, Wa kale, wa min al -jan. And oh Allah, I thank you and I praise you because when I was a baby, you protected me from the evil jinn. Meaning the jinn who work for, who, who are among the shayateen, the demon, demonic jinn, right? They're demonic jinn and believing jinn. So Imam is referring, doing very clear ishara to this in Dua Arafah. So these people exist. These things exist as realities. Dua, Imam al Hussein has a series of du'as for protection from shaitan. I don't know how many of us know about this. So many. There's, in fact, there's one I read. I try to read every night, actually, every day. I keep it in my pocket. This is the hiddus of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam uh, to protect us from evil. I mean, these are things that the Aima have given us. In fact, I have seen books, very early books from, the, you know, from Ibn Tawus, in which they have naqsh of the Imam, actually. A series of letters and numbers, and it's very complex, from Imam Bakir, from, or from Imam Jawad, from Amir al-Mu'mineen, um, all of them for protection from these, the army of jinn, and of, of demonic jinn and demonic humans. Uh, this is a reality. Our Aima have given us this material. Um, they're known as Ahras in Arabic, which are du'as for protection. For example, one of them here begins with Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan ar-Rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah wa Billah wa Illallah wa Fisibilillah wa Ala Millati Rasulillah, Allahumma, Allahumma kfinni bi quwwatik wa hawlik wa kudratik min sharri kulli mu'atal wa kayd al-fujjar in the name of Allah, by Allah, to Allah, in the path of Allah, and on the religion of Rasulullah, O oh Allah, protect me, bring me into your custodianship by your power and your strength and your determination from the evil of every arrogant, of every you know, person that thinks of themselves as powerful. Waqaydul fujar, and from the trickery of every corrupt fujar, of every sinful person. Um, for I only love the righteous and I only love the select in this world. So for example, this is one of them. There are numerous. It's like it, seven or eight from Imam Hussain alone. You have a whole book of Ahraz of, of Aimma only. These are from Aimma Tahirin, which are different du'as and for protection from shaitan. So in another du'a of Imam Hussain, and these are found in very old authentic books of our literature. It's something I specialize in for my PhD. Imam Hussein says, Asrif anni adhiyatul alimin min al jinn wal ins ajma'in. That, oh Allah, remove from me the hurt, the pain of everything in, this, in the universe from the jinn and the humans. Meaning the jinn can also inflict pain on us and the humans can also inflict pain on us. This is Abu Abdullah. Then he says, وَجَعَلْنِي أَلَّهُمَّ فِي هِرْزِكَ O oh Allah, place me under your protection, your hirs. وَفِي هِزْبِكَ And put me into your party. How? Through your worship. فِي عِبَادَتِكَ And put me into your covering. Cover me. And bring me into your custodianship. كَفَنِكَ كَنَفِكَ 
Min kulli shaitan, from every shaitan, meaning from every demon, from every demonic force. So there are these forces at war with the mu'mineen and the mu'minat. Min kulli shaitan, meaning there's, there's multiple, from every shaitan. Why? Why is this important? And then the brothers will raise the question, well, Mulana, I mean, that doesn't seem fair by Allah. Why would this exist? I mean, how could I be afraid of something I can't see? The answer to that question is if I was to travel from Toronto to New York, or New York to Toronto, which I just have, I have to pack my bags, I have to ensure the plane is on time, I have to check the weather, I have to find out what to wear, what not to wear, whether it's warm, whether it's cold, whether it's raining. I hope that the flight is safe, that the, that the airline has a good safety record, right? that they've not had like a hundred crashes and the plane has not been maintained and so on and so forth. I'm going up in the air, I'm flying, I'm going 30,000 feet to come here. I hope that they've maintained the, you know, the, ga the air masks and the life jackets and so on and so forth. I mean, it's not one of those African airlines, I hope, you know? Or I remember in, on Iran Air Bichara, I remember the whole seat literally would pop off. I remember we're like flying to Mashhad and the whole seat's falling off. I'm like, wow, man. Anyhow, now they got the plane parts, inshallah, so they'll be able to fix this, you know? Uh, you know, and it's not their fault, right? Because the West denied them plane parts for so many years, right? But the point is that I'm going to put all my effort to make sure that I arrive alive. Especially if I'm with my kids. Likewise, I Imma have told us that we are traveling from our birth to our death in this world. And we are all traveling through life. And in order to be prepared to travel through this world, we have to be able to protect ourselves from the things that we see and the things that we cannot see. Why would the Imams give us these ahras, these duas? Do we think this is superstition? Do we think Rasulullah gave two special ahras to Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein? We think this is some kind of game, some kind of superstition? That the Messenger of Allah would be occupied with these issues? <coughs> this is ma'aruf, ma'aruf. So well known, these things. In the most early authentic books of Islamic history, And then we need to know if we get stuck on the road, we get stranded, it's the middle of February, you're in Toronto, you're going to need gloves. You got to get out and change the tire. You're not going to be able to change the tire if you don't have gloves. Your hands will literally freeze to the, to the, to the tire iron, literally. I mean, it'll like rip your skin off, it'll happen to you. It's so cold in Toronto. It's like minus 40, you know, minus 35, the Celsius, I don't know about Fahrenheit. It's freezing. You're going to need gloves. So if we're in a certain situation, we need to know what to do. Those are with the things that we can see in dunya. What about the things that we cannot see in dunya? Look at what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. ذَلِكَ كِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That this is a book. There's no doubt in it. It is a guide for the pious people, for muttaqeen. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ what is the first attribute? They believe in the realm of the unseen. That there are forces at work that they cannot see. And the Imams had a very deep and profound insight into this Alam al Ghayb. Imam just gives us one instance of this in Dua Arafah. And without relying on God, without turning to God, we open ourselves up to all kinds of danger. And it is our fault, not God's. Because God has given us the Quran, God has given us Ahlul Bayt, God has given us all of these most beautiful pieces of guidance and gems. But if we don't know them and we don't practice them, 
then the fault is ours. If we don't follow what Allah has told us to follow, which is the salah and the wudu and so on and so forth, then if we are taken over or we are influenced by demonic forces, that is our fault. The Quran makes it clear that that is a fault of insan, not Allah's fault. Salaam ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Today we have an unprecedented evil of people that wish to wreak destruction and chaos around the world, these terrorists, these Wahhabis. There is no doubt that they are from the Junud of Shaitan. That people that spread chaos and corruption and misery wherever they go are the followers of Shaitan. Again, it's not like shaitan comes to Raqqa or Mosul with a sign-up sheet saying, okay, Abu Bakr Baghdadi, time for you to come Friday. Juma's finished. It's your turn for an interview if you can join my army. No, it doesn't work that way. Not at all. However, there is an understanding that some of the most evil of them actively sign up with shaitan. There is indications of this. Um, but nevertheless, we know from the traditions that those who crave violence, right, that the, the, the core of these sick people is that they crave violence, right? They come from US or, you know, Germany or wherever, running to Europe and, I mean, running from Europe to, you know, to Middle East to do these things and the people from there, is that they crave violence. And the Prophet has said, that one of the signs of the deepest sickness, of like a satanic sickness in someone's heart, is la yatamanna liqal adu, that do not crave war, do not desire to fight. That you know when you see in the movies that people are all pumped up, they're going to war, they say, you know, they're loading up their guns, they can't wait to go and kill people. This is a sickness, the Prophet has said, a deep sickness in the heart. And it is a satanic Influence. It's a satanic sickness. This desire to kill. Even if you are defending yourself, it should not be something that you're excited about. Killing should not give you a rush, and if it does, you're sick. You're a narcissist, you're a sociopath, there's something deeply wrong with you. Deeply. And these people that are butchering Shia, decapitating them, violating our women, day in and day out, with no consciousness, <coughs> do so thinking that they're the soldiers of God. And not only that, they desire the kital, they desire the, the fight. They crave the idea of going abroad to fight. These sick, demented, Satanic individuals is what they are. It's a reality. This is what they are. The people that spread this kind of violence and misery in the world. But the army of Satan will never be successful. Khosira khusranan mubina. Allah makes it very clear. That they will end up in complete misery. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So how does someone, what happens? Allah tells us in the Quran. I'm not even going to hadith. These are ayat, uh, ayat of Quran after ayat of Quran. Allah says about the people that constantly sin and the people who try to prevent the travel on the road to Allah, the road of piety, of, of, of humility, of charity, of worship, so on and so forth. Istahwada alayhim shaitan. Shaitan takes possession of them. This is Quran Kareem. Not hadith. A clear ayat of Quran. Istahwada alayhim shaitan fa ansahum dhikrullah. And then he causes them to forget Allah. That's why one of the signs of those who join, even if they don't know the army of, Satan, of, sh sh of, of Satan, is Tariq Salah. The one who abandons namaz. Not misses, abandons it. Regularly does not pray. 
This is one of the telltale signs that the individual has joined a new Jamaat. The Jamaat of Iblis and his Junood and his minions and his Tabi'een and his Ashia. Because the ayah is clear, for ansahum dhikrullah, and he makes them and causes them to forget Allah's remembrance. Because they've done so much sin, they have so much hasad, envy, anger, suspicion, they're constantly filling themselves up with all this garbage and poison. So it becomes a playground for shaitan, really. It really becomes, I mean, it makes his day, is what Quran is saying here. وَإِسْتَهْوَذَ عَلَيْهِمْ شَيْطَانِ And shaitan غَالِمٌ عَلَيْهِمْ He takes them. Istawalla, as the, as, the, as the tradition says, that they're no longer under their, that the shaitan is now grabbing the reins of their life. فَأَنْسَاهُمْ ذِكْرَ اللَّهُ أُولَيْكَ هِزْبُ الشَّيْطَانِ And they are the party of Satan. أَلَا إِنَّ هِزْبَ الشَّيْطَانِ هُمِ الْخَاسِرُونَ but is it not that the army, or the, rather the party of Satan, are miserable losers? Because no one can put the light of Allah out. No one. But this takes place, and the Quran is crystal clear. This is not something of superstition. And it's scary. The consequence of sin is profound. Of istimrar fi dhunub, continuous, continuous poison. Ends up in this. Which is istahwada alayhim shaitan. Okay, shaitan says, you want me, you want me, you want me? Fine, I'll take you now. And the person, wuhum la yash'urun, and they don't notice, they don't realize. It's not like they're, they got horns on their head and say, you know what, I'm a, sh I'm, 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 a, I'm a devil now. No, not at all. It's so subtle. We'll get to the subtlety. That's even more, a uh, little bit more scary. And worse things short worse. They think that they're on haq. They think that they are something. They think that, what, that they're good. They think that they are proud. They think that they're doing something of value. They drank their own Kool-Aid and they're convinced of their own lies. This is all from Holy Quran, by the way. I've not even gone to a single hadith. You want to go to a hadith, that's something else. It's, I think most people may not sleep tonight if we go to a hadith. Serious stuff. <laughs> and they present themselves as God's chosen ones. This is what happens when we leave the path of Ahlul Bayt. From the du'as of Ahlul Bayt. Ziyarat of Ahlul Bayt. Of implementing these du'as. Which teach us humility and love and compassion and worship and charity, and brotherhood, and modesty, haya. When we walk away from this, and we don't do it consciously, right? We believe in it, but we just don't care enough to practice any of it. Belief's not enough. Belief means nothing, really, is what Allah is saying. If we don't practice it, we could claim to believe all we want. We could still be in the army of shaitan. And they don't even feel or know that istahwada alayhim, that shaitan has taken over them. Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam says something very profound in Dua Tawbah and Sayfa Sajadiyah. He says, that the sins reach such a point that they are juggling, that the person is juggling them, yani, between their hands. 
wa istahwadha alayhi shaitan and then shaitan plucks him takes him fa qasara amma amarta bihi tafritan and then their life is a downhill slope it starts with missing fajr then dhuhr then asr then maghrib then isha one day another day another day another day it starts with one act of zina one act of abusing one's body in a way that they shouldn't and then it's another day and another day and another day until istahwada alayhi shaitan shaitan says you are too sweet for me you have served yourself to me so good i have to take a bite now and when i take a bite i'm going to take all of your soul i'm going to take a full munch into you and i'm going to show you what real poison is and then we might forget salah all together salah 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 hayya ala khair al amal come to the best deed hayya ala falah come to salvation unless we want to be the desert of satan and his army sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad and once someone is possessed again this is not possession in the sense that they realize it's through their deeds and their bad actions it's not possession in the sense like the movie exorcist or something no it's nothing like that at all in majority of cases they don't realize and they don't know even wala amurannahum fala yughayyir fala yughayyuranna khalqillah so now once they join the army of satan what do they start doing they start to deface allah's creation they start to change god's creation this is scary here Sheikh Jawad Maghniya, one of our greatest ulama of Lebanon, a great scholar, marhum, he died in 1979. He says in Tafsir al-Kashif, he says something interesting. He says, if you want to think about the epitome of, of what this verse could mean, go to Hiroshima, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That the day that those kiloton nuclear weapons were dropped on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's earth, changed humanity forever human beings with the nuclear weapons race would never be the same again because they came up with a very ingenious and disgusting way to destroy god's creation to change god's creation right because it alters your dna right exposure to this radiation alters your dna right it corrupts your, your dna your cells human beings with all this knowledge shaitan has said la amuran that i will order them i will push them to change god's creation in ways that you don't even know do we know what the effect of a nuclear weapon is what it does that the effects last hundreds of years destroys crops destroys the water s- s- system the thousands and thousands and generations of generations of people are born with deficiencies children are born with six fingers and 10 fingers and cancer and leukemia and all kinds do you know what the effect of these bombs were does anyone ever taught us that in school what happened in japan what human beings can do to one another Isn't this a manifestation of the ayat of Quran? We are stewards of this earth, brothers and sisters. Each and every one of us are stewards and caretakers of this dunya, this earth. Look at the animals that we eat. Why are people suffering from all kinds of issues today? 
estrogen and all kinds of issues of ex excessive estrogen, problems like this in men. Why? Because our animals are not even real. They're cooked up, they're made in a lab. They're injected with growth hormones and all kinds of things. And it's not like we said, okay, let's get like 100 people for 10 years, feed them growth hormone, hormone meat, you know, and then the meat company will say, okay, you know what, I think it's safe. We're going to sell it now. We're going to sell it at Walmart or we're going to sell it wherever, you know, at, you know, at some store, wherever it is. I don't know if Walmart sells that kind of meat. I'm just using an example. No, because people are sick. People have issues. This is the nature of, of, of the corporation as, as, as an entity. It's narcissistic. It's sociopathic. It has no feeling. There's only one word that's profit. And when we get caught, then it's an issue. When people like, uh, what is his name, uh, Michael Moore, when he comes and does, and does a documentary, oh, oh, well, now, okay, we got to be, you know, uh, hormone-free. People don't care. They're going to play with God's creation. They're going to mess it up. And they're going to mess all of us up and our children. Because human beings have tried to destroy Allah's pristine creation. Whether it be through the nuclear weapons or the disgusting hormones in our food and meat. Hopefully non halal meat. I don't know how halal meat is produced here in America. We have a new movement in Toronto which is organic halal meat. It's very good. Some of the brothers from the community, mashallah, are producing beautiful meat in Toronto. Clean meat. That we can feed our children with some sense of, of peace. This is all this is all manifestations of shaitan. Did you know in the Pacific Ocean? There's a portion of the Pacific Ocean that is so dirty and it is so filled with plastic that they call it, it's an area the size of Russia. So Russia is the second largest country on the planet, yes or no? Yes. There is an area in the, of the Pacific Ocean so filled with plastic and garbage, our garbage by the way, let's not push the buck down, our garbage, it's the size of Russia that in 2014, the number of bottles to fish were one to five. By 2050, we are told by the ministries of, of oceanic, you know, oceans and stuff, that by 2050, so that's not even in what? That's not even in 40 years, right? Something like 34 years. It's going to be one to, it's going to be five to five. That for every five plastic bottles, there's going to be five fish. And the fish are done. Fish are gone. I mean, that, that is something of the past. Whether we can save them or not now, I don't know. According to the current statistics, we may not even be eating fish in 30 years. Not salmon, for sure. That is gone. Tuna will be gone. They're gone. And if we're eating them, we're going to get cancers and leukemia and all kinds of things from it. So fish, which is the most healthy, will end up becoming a poison. A lot of the fish are already poison as it is today. Why? Because insan has poison. And shaitan has said that I will do it. That when they forget God, when they forget Rasulullah, when they forget the principles of moderation and peace and compassion and empathy and care towards everything around us, whether it be the grass, the trees, the plants, the fish, our spouses, our children, so on and so forth, when they forget the message of Rasulullah, then they will fill the ocean up with a five to five ratio of water bottles to fish. And they will destroy this earth. And then they are finished. They have lost is what Allah is saying. Do we care as Muslims? We have the religion, you know, Hashim, uh, Muhammad Hashim Kamali, a great scholar, an incredible scholar, who has written a book called Moderation in Islam published by Oxford, actually. In this book, he says, there is no religion which puts so much emphasis on animals and the environment as the Quran. No book, not the Bible, not the Gita, nope. Quran. 
Yet Muslims around the world, unfortunately, are some of the dirtiest communities. I was in Masjid al-Kufa just recently, alhamdulillah. And when I came outside, all I could see along the road, you know, I was driving with my cat, with a, with a taxi. And I said, why is there no scenery? He said, there is, Sheikh, it's called plastic bags. It's so disgusting. It is so embarrassing. We could claim to be followers of Imam Ali and we could still be in the army of shaitan whether we know it or not, because we are destroying this world. <coughs> so I'm not saying West better than East, East better than West. I'm not getting into that. But each and every one of us have a responsibility on an individual level to ask ourselves, am I in the Jamaat of Shaitan or am I in the Jamaat of Insan and Mu'mineen and Mu'minat and Salihin wa Salihat? How do I treat the environment? Do I pollute? Then I have done a satanic act. Because Satan has promised this is what he's going to do. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Oof. What have humans done to their minds? Let's go to the mind now. I'm, I'm not going to stop. We're continuing tomorrow night. To the mind. Did you know recent research has now shown, this is in some medical journals, that those who watch indecent films and images are now rewiring their brain. Because the brain has something known as neuroplasticity, Meaning when neurons, neurons that fire together, wire together. Meaning that every time we are stimulated, our brain, in a sense, rewires itself. And those who watch or expose themselves to indecent images and films flood their brain with dopamine. And when they flood their brain with dopamine, dopamine is like a drug they actually end up rewiring their brain. Um, after constant exposure to this, they end up rewiring their actual brain, what Allah has given them. This is exactly what shaitan said, that I'm not only going to ruin the creation, I'm going to help them destroy their own brains. And we know now, my dear brothers and sisters, that those who expose themselves to indecent images for prolonged periods of time have the chance of actually d affecting their DNA and passing that addiction on to their children. And recently, there was a meeting in Toronto with people like Sheikh Hamza Youssef, who talked about this. This is a crisis. This is, this is something which, and by the way, the highest number of searches of this kind of material comes from Islamic countries, per capita. It's from Gulf countries, and then Iraq is also on, very high up on that list. Muslims can't claim that they are actually the highest per capita, because once they got high speed, we saw what they did with it. And, and, we re and human beings actually rewire their brain. And Sheikh Hamza Yusuf was saying that after the event, there were actually women in hijab coming up to him, telling him that our husbands have this problem. This is an epidemic. An epidemic of monstrous proportions. And now we know it doesn't only destroy our soul. It's not only something which, it's like the initiation into the army of shaitan, into Satan, to become a part of Satan. But it also rewires our brain. And it destroys marriages, it destroys relationships, and it destroys lives. 
this is the amal of shaitan. This is the, this is, this is, I mean, shaitan, I don't think has been happier ever in his existence. Because human beings just make it so easy for him. And they allow him into their bedrooms and their homes and their family rooms and their living rooms and their cars and their phones. And this is where insan is at. Illa qalila. Except for the few, as the Quran says. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I have no idea what time I started, so someone give me an indication when I have like 10 minutes left. But the Prophet of Islam has said, very powerful hadith, brothers and sisters. Very powerful hadith here. He says that the libas of Islam is haya, is shame, to have shame over our body. When that is left, Islam is uryan. It has no more clothing. This is, of course, a very deep metaphor. That the more we unclothe ourselves, the more we become satanic. Prophet's words are so profound. They, they just hammer right at the heart. It's like an arrow. It just goes bam. He, call, he just says it for what it is, straight. And the beauty of Arabic is it, there's, no, there's not isharat in Arabic like this. Arabic is a very, it's a very um, mechanical language. It's very direct in this sense. And the Prophet even uses words that normally in Urdu we wouldn't use those words, or Persian, we wouldn't use those words. But this is a luga of Rasulullah. There's nothing to be ashamed. This is the words of the Messenger of Allah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, hijab is not a punishment. It is to maintain that dignity and divinity that God, that divine presence that God has put into our hearts. It is to preserve the dignity that Allah has given us. It is to keep us within the group of mu'minin and mu'minat and not enter the group of shayateen. Because the greatest sign according to the traditions again, is that as human beings unclothe themselves, they become more demonic. Whether they know it or not, nobody's saying that there are Satan worshippers, no. But they end up collecting demonic attributes because the, the work of shaitan is to change the primordial essence of the human being to try to alter that, to try to influence that, rather. God created us, all of us, beautiful, on His way. But when we consume filth and perform filth, shaitan is the one who enters the equation not the Imam of our time. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I'll end with one more point about our children before I go to the Masaib. It is a Friday night, alhamdulillah, many of us, you know, we don't have work tomorrow. But this is, this is a very important issue about our children. Brothers and sisters, our house is Darul Islam. It has to be. We must believe and understand that our house is the abode of Islam. And I'll be very honest, I don't think personal media devices should be in private locations. They should be somewhere where people can see them. If our house is Darul Islam, to the best of our ability. Shaitan is so quick. We have to say, this is allowed, this is not allowed in my house. P 
period. I don't want shaitan taking residence in my home. I don't want shaitan sharing the bed with my child. That is a reality. That I'm in the crib, I'm laying in bed, but the, the, the satanic jinn did not come to join me. This is from Dua Arafah, from Imam Hussein. But we let shaitan into our lives. Into the bedrooms of our children. Into the rooms of our adults. We do. And then we wonder why we can't wake up for Fajr and pray and cry for Imam Hussain Some of us, God forbid. But the door to Toba is always open, brothers and sisters. Always, no matter how far we think we've gone, all it takes is the determination to say, today, no more. Today, I will return to Salah. Today, I will return to Siyam. Today, I will return to remembering Allah. And it is tonight that we remember two great youth who were in the party of Allah and Imam and not the party of Shaitan. Rather, three. After the death of Muslim bin Awsaja, Zuhair bin Qain, Habib ibn Mazahir, it is now time for the children of Banu Hashim to come forward. <coughs> These are the children who were raised in the party of Allah, whose soul is filled with the light of Imam al Hussein, and they come forward. These youth, Historians tell us we're like young lions. For some of them, the imam would tell them, you're too young. This is not for you to do. And every time, do you know what they would do? They would kiss the hands and feet of Imam al Hussein, And they would sit at his feet crying like babies begging their imam to allow them to go to fights. These were the hardest moments, Ya Zadar al Hussein. These were the hardest moments for Imam al Hussein To allow the children of others to die for him. All these children were an amanat in his hand. And the time came where he had to let them go. We're told in the traditions that each time a child would go out, they would kiss their uncle Abbas, and they would be filled with tears. And do you know why they would be filled with tears? Because when they look at their uncle, they cry to Allah about his situation of Gurbat. Yeah. This is the party of Allah. These are the children. Ala Yaseen, the people of Yaseen. And the women would scream and they would cry each time a child goes out. One of those children, before I get to the two children tonight, is the son of Bibi Rukaya. How many of us know about the son of Bibi Rukayya? <coughs> the grandson of Imam Ali alayhi salam. This son was absolutely remarkable. His name is Abdullah bin Muslim. The son of Rukayya bin Ali. He goes forth to fight after Imam al Hussein allows him. Rukayya is watching. He says, today I am going to meet my father Muslim. That today I shall meet the youths who have already laid down their lives. For they are people who do not know how to lie. Ya al shabab, brothers, listen. For they are youth that do not know how to lie. For they are of honorable descent and birth. Min Hashim al Sadat Ahlul Hasabi. Because they are from the Sadat of Banu Hashim. 
This boy, Abdullah, goes forth. He killed 90 or so men. However, the traditions tell us that as he raised his hands to protect his forehead, Riqad al-Jabni fired an arrow. It impaled the hand of the son of Ruqayya to his forehead. Assalamu alayka ya Ruqayya bint Ali alayhi salam. His hand is impaled to his head. They surrounded him and they began to stab him with the spear one by one. Ibn Afir tells us in his Kamil that when they finished stabbing him, when they finished cutting him, they then burnt his body. They then set the body of the grandson of Amir al-Mu'mineen on fire. We're told that one of the people who took place in, of, in this killing was Sabih al-Saydawi. La'natullahi ta'ala alayhi. In fact, Imam Zaman sends a special salam to him in Ziyarat al-Nahiyya. Now we come to the sons of Abdullah bin Ja'far. The two boys who were sent as a hadiyah and a gift to Imam al Hussein. Then on the son, the first one, the son of Abdullah bin Ja'far launches into battle. Now do you know whose turn it is to grieve? It is the time of Aqilah Zainab alayhi salam. It is the time for Zainab to grieve. Take your heart to Karbala. Aqilah Zainab bint Ali alayhi salam is now sending her little lion. She is sending her lath out into battle. On goes out to fight and he killed 18 men. Until Abdullah bin Qatna cut him with his sword. We're told in the traditions that he died from a sword wound and they killed him. We're told in the traditions that Imam al-Zaman says, Assalamu alayka ala aun bint Abdullah bin Ja'far alayhi salam. Ya Zainab alayhi salam. What a journey you have had. What a life you have had. As if the broken rib of her mother was not enough. As if the bruised face of her mother was not enough. As if the miscarried child, Mohsin, who was damaged in the womb of her mother was not enough. This is why she is known, known as Ummul Masaib, the mother of Masaib. She had to see her mother murdered and beaten. She saw her father's head split open with a poison sword. She saw her brother Hassan alayhi salam poisoned and killed and tortured. And now she sees her own son butchered in the most brutal ways. Assalamu alayki. Ya Zainab al-Kubra alayhi salam Take your hearts to Sham, give your aza, give your condolences to Zainab alayhi salam Brothers and sisters, after on came the next one and his name was Muhammad. He fought and killed ten soldiers until once again he was ganged up upon and killed. How all of these mothers must have felt on the day of Ashura, we do not even know. What about the sisters that were waiting for their brothers to return? Only to see them without life. Imam Zaman says in Ziyarat al Nahiyah, take your hearts to Karbala. This is a Ziyarat of Imam al Mahdi. He says, Assalam. Salama man lokana ma'ak bittufuf. That peace be upon the one. If he was with you, he would have thrown himself on top of every spear. That if we were there in Karbala, we would throw our body on top of every spear, on top of every arrow. This is what Imam al Mahdi is telling us in his ziyarah. And that if only I could exchange my breath for your breath, Ya Abu Abdullah. If only I could exchange my blood for your blood, Ya Abu Abdullah. Wajahada bayna yadayk. And to fight in front of you. Wa nasaraka ala man baga alayk. And to assist those that fought against you. 
But today all that I can do is to surrender my soul to you, to surrender my body to you, to surrender my wealth to you, to surrender my children to you, to surrender my soul to you, that may my soul for your soul be ransomed. Ya Abu Abdullah. Ruhuhu li ruhika al-fida wa ahluhu li ahlik hima. That may my children be ransomed for your children. That when we go to Zainab alayhi salam in Sham, are we ready to tell her that I will give up my own for your own? I will give up my Muhammad for your Muhammad. Are we ready to say this? Is this our commitment to Ahlul Bayt or not? If this is not our commitment to Ahlul Bayt, then inshallah from tonight we will have the azima and the courage to have this commitment towards Ahlul Bayt. For inshallah our tears are tears of haqq. Inshallah our tears are tears of siddiq. وَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ذَلَمُوا أَيْ مُنْقَلَبٍ يَنْقَلِبُونَ Laanatullahi ala kawm dhalameen. Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, wa Hussaina. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. جب تک انسار زندہ تھے تب تک انہوں نے یہ غوارہ نہیں کیا کہ بنی حاشب کا کوئی فرد پر آنچ آئے لہذا پہلے سب انساروں نے اپنے جانے قربان کی اب باری آئے گنچہائے باغ ابو طالب کا اکیر کے نو نحال انہوں نے اپنے موت کی گاٹے میں اتر آئے امام حسین ایک ایک بتیجے کا لاشا گنج شہدہ میں لا کے لٹا دیا اب باری آئی اولاد جعفر کی لو محبو ان قریب زیدب کی کمائی لٹنے والی ہے بہن کی اسرار پر بھائی نے اونا محمد کو اجازت کارزار مرحمت فرمایا دونوں شہزادے گورے پر سوار ہو کے میدان کی طرف چلے ہمارے جانے قربان ہو سالی زہرہ کی سبر پر پتا نہیں کس دل سے اپنے نونحال بچوں کو میدان میں بیجا زینب بی بی آگے بری بیٹے کا بیٹوں کا رخصت کی اور یہ بھی فرمایا بیٹا علی اصغر اور سکینہ کی پیاس زہن میں رہے اگر موقع بھی ملا تب بھی ایک کترہ پانی کا مت پینا لو میرے دولارو خدا حافظ آونا محمد ہمیش کے لیے ماں سے رخصت ہو کے بیدان کارزا کی طرف چلے اور ضعیف ماں ضعیف ماں دیکھتی رہی اگر جے دو دونوں کم سنتے مگر جعفر کے پہتے اور علی کے نواسے شیرانہ جنگ سے میدان کارزار کو ہلا دیا عمر سعد نے حکم دیا کہ ان بچوں کو چاروں طرف سے گیر لو اب کیا تھا دشمن کی فوجو چاروں طرف سے تیر و تلواروں کے وار ہونے لگے ایک وہ وقت آیا کہ دونوں شہزادے زمین کربلا پر گرے اور مامو کو آواز دی مامو جان ادرکنی ادرکنی بطول قلال چلے بچوں کے سرحانے پہنچے بچوں نے مولا سے آخری التجا کی مامو جان ہماری امہ سے کہہ 
کہنا کہ ہم پیاسے ضرور تھے مگر ایک قطر اب کبھی ہم نے نہیں پیا بلکہ ہم فراد کے قریب پک تک قریب تک نہیں گئے علی اصغر اور سکینہ کی پیاس کا تقاضا اپنے ساتھ لے کے ہم جا رہے ہیں بچوں نے پھر دم توڑ لی انا للہ و انا الہ راجعون مولا شہزاد و کلا شہ اٹھائے دور سے فضا نے یہ ماجرہ دیکھ رہی تھی خیمے میں گئی کہا بی 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 آپ لٹ چکی آپ کلال مارا گیا ماں کی دل تھی پیارے بچے کو کس ناز و نام سے پہلی تھی ارمان تھا کہ بچوں کی شادی رچا ہوگی نوازوں سے کھیل لوگی وہ سب خواب مٹی میں مل گئے مگر سبر کی مالکہ تھی زبان پر کچھ نہ کہی سہزادی سجدہ مادبود نے اپنا سر جکا لی یا ہوں گا میری یہ چھوٹی سی قربان قبول کیجئے زینب بی بی اونا محمد کو کربلا میں نہ زندان میں جی بھر کے کھلی طرح سے ماتم کی اونا کے غم میں نہ گیریا کی دل ہی دل میں رویا کی لیکن جب قید سے چھٹ کے مدینہ واپس آئی اور دوبارہ اپنے گھر میں گئی اونا محمد کے چھوٹے چھوٹے مسلح پر نظر پڑی اب مامتا جوش میں اس جوش زن ہوئی اونا محمد کی تصویر کی تصویر آنکھ میں پھرنے لگی طرف کے کہا آئے آون آئے محمد دخیاری ماں کے لی رہ گئی میرے لال ماں تمہیں پکار رہی ہے اور تو خاموش سے سو رہے ہو تمہارے بینجے ماں کی دن کئی سے نکلے گی اتنے میں شوہر عبداللہ بن جعفر گھر میں تاخل ہوئے ہائر زمانہ کس طرح اس طرح حلبے سے پھر چکے تھے کہ شوہر بی بی کو نہ پہچانا پوچھنے لگے اے کنیز خدا کس مصیبت نے تجھے اس گھر میں داخل ہونے پر مجبور کیا پلٹ کے زینب بی بی نے کہا عبداللہ دختر زہرہ کو نہ پہچانا گبرا کے عبداللہ نے کہا بی بی آپ اتنی ضعیفہ ہو گئی میں عرض کروں گا عبداللہ شامیہ بستند بازو زینب و کل زوبرا مر گئے جائے تیرے شہنے صدا دی بہان مر گئے جائے تیرے بنتے شہب الحسان مر گئے جائے تیرے ہائے وہ خرشید و ماں تور کے دم کر کے آہ 
दे गए रंजो महान मर गए जाए तेरे मांग के पानी का जाम हो गए दोनों तमाम हाय वो तिष्णा दह मर गए जाए तेरे बात तलब भी न की खुल्द की बस राहली कम सुखनो बेवत मर गए जाए तेरे खंजरो तलवार से तीरो की बोचार से होते ही जख्मी बद मर गए जाए तेरे लाश लाया हूँ नो मुहम्मद का मुझे जैनब को पुरसा देना है जरा पर्दा हटा दीजे खई में का मुझे जैनब को पुरसा देना है ए बाबा ली तुम न जफ छोड़ के ए माफा फातिमा तुम लहद छोर के आके खई में मैं साथ चलो तुम मेरे मुझे जैनब को पुरसा देना है जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मुहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मुहम्मद मेरे मर गए खू में नहा ओनो मुहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा जैनब ने रो कर कहा मेरे मर गए खू में नहा मोहम्मद मेरे मामू पे सद के हुए तेगो से जख्मी हुए मामू पे सद के हुए तेगो से जख्मी हुए खू में तरपते हुए ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा मेरे मर गए खू में नहा मद मेरे ब्याह न मैंने रचा दिल का न मतलब हुआ ब्याह न मैंने रचा दिल का न मतलब हुआ रोती रही मैं यहाँ ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा जैनब ने रो कर कहा मेरे मर गए खू में नहा मेरे और मथा बहु पोते का हा ये ये क्या हो गया और मथा बहु पोते का हा ये ये क्या हो गया दिल में मेरे रह गया ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे 
मर गए खू में नहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे शादी के कपड़े जो है किसको वो पहनाऊ में शादी के कपड़े जो है किसको वो पहनाऊ में देख कर रोती हूँ मैं ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे मर गए खू में नहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे हाये अजल आ गई मौत तुम्हें बा गई हाये अजल आ गई मौत तुम्हें बा गई किसकी नजर खा गई ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे मर गए खू में नहा जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे मर गए खू में नहा मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा मेरे मर गए खू में नहा मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे मर गए खू में नहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर नहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे मर गए खू में नहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे मर गए जैनब ने रो कर कहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे मर गए खू में नहा ओनो मोहम्मद मेरे जैनब ने रो कर कहाबलाए कर बलाए कर बो बला कर बलाए कर कर बलाए कर बलाए कर सुबह आशूर को अकबर ने दी अजा लेला पुकारी बेटा तेरी आखरी अजा कर बलाए कर बलाए कर बो कर बलाए कर बलाए भला सुबह आशूर को अकबर ने दी अजा लेला पुकारी बेटा तेरी आखरी अजा कर बलाए कर बलाए कर बो कर बलाए कर बलाए कर भला सुबह आशूर को अकबर ने दी अजा लेला पुकारी बेटा तेरी आखरी अजा कर बलाए जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया तुम फाते हर बद से तुम फाते से जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम फाते हर बद से दिलाना मेरी बहना जैनब से जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम फाते हरबत से दिलाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना तुम फाते हरबत से से घर बाद मेरे पानी माया सर तू में होवे पहले तुम सकीना को पिलाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना तुम 
से घर बाद मेरे पानी मैसर तू में हो पहले तुम सकीना को पिलाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया से मक्तल की तरफ से तुम ले जाएंगे अदलाम प्यारी को अलमदाना दिखाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया मेरी बहना मक्तल की तरफ से तुम ले जाएंगे अदलाम प्यारी को अलमदाना दिखाना मेरी बहना जैनब मेरी बहना दुखिया इस्लाम की है शान हुसैन का माताम इस्लाम की है शान हुसैन का माताम चौदह सौ बरस से चौदह बरस से इस्लाम की है शान हुसैन का माताम चौदह सौ बरस से है दुनिया में कायाम इस्लाम की है हुसैन का माताम हुसैन का माताम चौदह सौ बरस से बरस से इस्लाम से हुसैन हुसैन से इस्लाम चौदह सौ बरस से हे दुनिया में कायाम इस्लाम की है शान इस्लाम की है शान हुसैन से सजदे में सर कटाया गरबार को लुटाया चौदह सौ बरस से हे दुनिया में कायाम इस्लाम की है शान रसल हुसैन बियाला रसिल का नजवा रसल हुसैन बियाला रसिल का न रसल हुसैन रसल हुसैन बियाला रसिल का न सादा रसल हुसैन बियाला न सादा रसील का नादा मौलाली बियाला रसील का नादा रसल हुसैन बियाला से बियाला रसील का नसल हुसैन रसल हुसैन बियाला रसील का नादा रसल हुसैन बियाला बियाला रसील का न हो गई बर्बाद है जैना के जैन जवाब आजादा जवाब हो गई बर्बाद है जैना में कहती थी जैनाब हाय हुसैना हो गई बर्बाद है जैनाब में कहती थी जैनाब हाय हुसैना जवाब आजादा उबुल से जवाब ना हो गई जैना में बीबियों के सर पर नहीं चादर आओ मदद के लिए बाबा में हाय हुसैना
حسین نہ ہو گئی برباد زینہ میٹی رو پہ اصغر نیزے پہ اکبر فاطمہ کی لٹی کمائی میں کہتی تھی حسینہ آئے حسینہ جانی بے مردم برو آرام بے جانا سکوف تے لیلا جواب آزا جواب سکوف تے لیلا دو غام ہے جوانا جواب اے جوانا جواب آزا جواب ہے گوفت لیلا مادست و غاب اے جوانا نامرادار جانی بے میدم بر جانا گوفت لیلا مادست و غان گوفت لیلا جواب آزادار و جواب اے جوانا نامرادار مرادان جانی اے گوفت زینہ آئے بیرادان اے شفیع روز محشا جانی بے مہدم برو جانا گوفت لیلا جواب آزا جواب جوانا نامرادان اے گوفت لیلا بادست و غام اے جوانا نامرادان جانی بے مید جانا گوفت لیلا بادست و غام غفت لیلا بادست و غام ہے جوانان نامرادان ہے جوانان نامرادان جانی بے میں نادے علی ان علی ان یا علی لی بادشاہ جن و بشر یا علی لی حسین شہید کربلا و ویلا ویلا انشب جناب فاطمہ و ویلا ویلا ازو علا امامکم و ویلا ویلا و ویلا و ویلا لا و ویلا یا مظلوم یا حسین یا حسین یا حسین یا حسین مامو پہ سج کے ہوئے تیغوں سے زخمی ہوئے خوں میں ترپتے ہوئے اونو محمد میرے مر گئے خوں میں نہا اونو محمد میرے زینب نے رو کر کا اونو محمد میرے زینب نے رو کر کہا اونو محمد میرے مر گئے خوں میں نہا حمد میرے ہائے آجل آگئی موٹ تمہیں بھاگئی کس کی نظر کھا گئی اونو محمد میرے مر گئے خوں میں نہا اونو محمد میرے زینب نے رو کر کہا اونو محمد میرے زینب نے رو کر کہا اونو محمد میرے 
محمد میرے مامو پہ سج کے ہوئے تیغوں سے زخمی ہوئے خومے ترپے ہوئے اونو محمد میرے مر گئے خومے نہا اونو محمد میرے زینب نے رو کر کا اونو محمد میرے پسند زہرہ سلام تم پر دل بند حیدر سلام تم پر ہمارے آقا جواب آزا جواب ہمارے آقا سلام تم پر ہمارے مولا سلام تم پر نور خدا ہے سکت پائمبر مالیک میشر شافی میشر فرزند زہرہ سلام تم پر فرزند زہرہ سلام تم پر دل بند حیدر سلام تم پر ہمارے آقا سلام تم پر ہمارے آقا سلام تم پر ہمارے مولا سلام پم پر نور خدا ہے دل کے پیمبر شافی میشر شافی میشر فرزند زہرہ سلام تم پر فرزند زہرہ سلام تم پر دل بند حیدر سلام تم پر ہمارے آقا جواب آزادارو جواب ہمارے آقا سلام تم پر ہمارے مولا سلام تم پر کربو بلا میں ہم کو بولانا روز قیامت ہم کو بچانا فرزند زہرہ سلام تم پر فرزند زہرہ سلام تم پر دل بند حیدر سلام تم پر ہمارے آقا سلام تم پر ہمارے آقا سلام تم پر ہمارے مولا سلام تم پر نور خدا ہے سبت پیمبر مالک کوسر شافی میشر فرزند زہرہ سلام تم پر فرزند زہرہ سلام تم پر دل بند حیدر سلام تم پر ہمارے آقا سلام تم پر ہمارے آقا سلام تم پر ہمارے مولا سلام تم پر آخر کا وقت کہنا میرا یہ سلام ہے سب عاشق حسین کو میرا سلام ہے ایک دن اسی طرح سے یہ دنیا تمام ہے پر شاہ کربلا کا زانا تمام ہے سام عاشتا کر دے میرے دل کے چین کا پروردگار واسطہ مولا حسین کا ہلکی جیئے مشکل میری اب دیر ستم ہے عباس علی تم کو سکینہ کی قسم ہے یا موسیع کازم ہمیں آفت سے چھراؤ یا موسیع کازم ہمیں آفت سے چھراؤ بے میرے حسن حسین مصیبت سے بچاؤ بر محمد و آلی محمد صلوات السلام علیکم یا رسول اللہ یا محمد ابن عبداللہ السلام علیکم یا امیر المؤمنین یا علی ابن عبی طالب 
السلام علیکم یا خدیجۃ القبرا ام المؤمنین السلام علیکم یا فاطمۃ الزہراء سیدۃ النساء العالمین السلام علیکم یا حسن ابن علی المجتبی السلام علیکم یا ابا عبد الله یا حسین ابن علی الشہید ابی کربلا السلام علیکم یا علی ابن الحسین زین العابدین السلام علیکم یا محمد ابن علی الباقر السلام علیکم یا جعفر ابن محمد الصادق السلام علیکم یا موسی ابن جعفر الکاظم السلام علیکم یا علی ابن موسی الرضا السلام علیکم یا محمد ابن علی الجواد السلام علیکم یا علی ابن محمد الہادی السلام علیکم یا حسن ابن علی العسکری السلام علیکم یا حجۃ اللہ ابن الحسن یا صاحب الزمان السلام علیکم یا شریک القرآن السلام علیکم یا کعبۃ الایمان السلام علیکم یا خلیفۃ الرحمن السلام علیکم یا امام الانس والجان ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ